it doesn't lie, right? Like if you see fish, there's fish. That's freaking cool, dude. That's a big crappie. That's about as big as they get in South Jersey right there. Fish everywhere. Crazy. Fish everywhere, yeah. I just feel like all the traditional ways to catch them right now is out the fucking window, dude. I feel like with this warm weather, it's almost like frog, fucking swim jig, like shit that you wouldn't be throwing this time of the year, but I don't know. This seems awfully fucking warm. You know? Seems awfully warm. All the years fishing here, I've never really ever fished any of this shit right here by the ramp. special. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey. hey, hungry, yo, hey. I bleed my own blood. <laughs> Ow. When they do that flare thing, dude, they're sharp, man. Flashback. Yeah, see that little sharp fins, the, the points, the corners? That's what you gotta be careful. When you lay them down, they tense up, <clears throat> and the spikes go, <clears throat> I wanna see what happens. Yeah, ah, yeah. Careful. End of flashback. Popper flopper in November. I want to be in that, it doesn't have to be the warmest water in late fall, but I don't want the coldest. I, I want moderate to warm. And you know, we launched this morning down by the dam, we had almost 62 degrees. Now we're in the back toward the headwaters and we're all the way down to 60. So we're talking about a two degree difference. And in the spring, obviously it's a big thing, but in the late fall, it can also be a big deal. So not loving the fact that it's gone down, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back a little more, push back a little more. You know, these cold nights are getting these shallow flats, right? We got amazing high sun warm day but the, the nights are cold enough to really impact these flats what you have down by the dam is you have a channel and you have a drop and that's like an insulator that's keeping that front warm so although this heats quicker it cools quicker that's that's what's happening back here cooling water ah, it's a big <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding me? I mean, the first bus. Well, that tells you a lot right there if you look at that fish, guys. That is blotched up, aka inked up, aka fish tattoos. And, uh, it's a really good look at a fish and kind of try to explain to you what that is right there. And if you look at them, you see these pigment changes, black blotches all over the fish. A lot of people call them a lot of different things. I call them a winter spots, winter spots. And um, you know, what it is is a fish is like a chameleon and that fish will really adapt to his surroundings. So we're here in November, this is super late fall. And even though it's mild, when the fish start relating to the bottom, they'll develop all those spots, those black blotches like that. So um, really cool to see that. Tells you a little bit about the mood of the fish, uh, fish that's relating more to the bottom. You know, late fall, when you see these dots like that, fish allure slower and lower to the bottom because that means the fish are hanging around the bottom. Fall transition. Bye.
too. And that's uh, not a big one, but I always like to look at the way they're eating the bait. You know, it's very important. I don't care if it's a top water, a stick bait, a fluke, whatever, a crank bait, jig. But when they're eating the bait like that, when that bait is gone, you're throwing the right thing. So, fish number two, not a big one, but the way that that is in his throat is a good sign that I made the right change. Uh, talk to you about the change I made and basically just gone to finesse swim bait. And this is a really cool little bait, just a three inch little finesse swim bait, green pumpkin, which matches a lot of the forage base in here, little bluegill, little perch, whatever. And I'm just fishing it on an eighth ounce ball head. So um, when I was young, they called this grub fishing. It's changed now and they call it finesse swim bait fishing. But when that water starts to get cool in the late fall, that little tiny tab tail, sassy shad style tail, just that pulse, steady pulse, can trigger a lot of bites. So, um, you know, fished here, went to the back, the water was colder. We started working our way back to mid lake. The water warmed up, made a couple bait switches and started getting some bites. So we're starting to put the pattern together. Uh, you know, fall transition, we're right on the heels of winter. Uh, and experiencing a weird warm front. So, uh, two fish, a perch. Let's keep fishing, see what happens. Off the active target. There's still a bunch of them there. It's like four or five of them right there. Yeah, see that thing right there? Try to get in line with them. A lot of fish are out there. I think they maybe they're all crappie out there. So thick I can feel the jerk bait hit me. There he goes. Big one. Giant. On the active target. Oh, big one, dude. Caught him right off the active target. This is why this Lowrance is so important sometimes. Acting weird though. Hold on. Wait a minute. It's a big crappie. It's a giant crappie. I mean, biggest crappie I've ever seen. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. Look at that, dude. How cool. That was amazing. All right, so it wasn't a bass, but I could see this big school of fish out here on my, on my graph. I threw it one, had them on and come off, and I kept throwing at the school, and there's what they were. It's the great thing about that Lowrance active target. It doesn't lie, right? Like, if you see fish, there's fish. You know, traditional 2D, you don't have that as much, but with uh with active target man it is what it is so there's a real nice one on a little jerk bait just seeing them out there and casting to them that's that's freaking cool dude that's a big crappie that's about as big as they get in south jersey right there big white crappie man that thing's beautiful wow Man, I think all I need now is a picker on a bluegill and I got the South Jersey Slam. That's crazy. Whew. Pretty fish. I just thought it was a big bass. <laughs> wow. It's either a big crappie or it's another crappie. So, I, so this is what I found down here in this end of the lake. Using the live target, active target. Using the active target, keep seeing them on the graph, and look at the size of those things. They are jumbos, dude. It's really, it's really fun. It's really a bonus, but man, the power of that unit right there, of being able to see them and cast to them, is just incredible. But definitely did not expect to come here and catch a crappie like that, but take them. That's a big one. So this is a little one that I throw that's like a mini. It's, you know, this is just the condensed version of an Alabama rig. It's, uh, 
by a company called Shane's and it's a five wire but it's just small it's a mini umbrella rig and uh, it's got five Berkeley uh, 2.8 uh, power swimmers on there and whenever I throw the umbrella rig I always I mean always put a different color bait on the middle wire so bluegill flash one two three four in the middle sexy shad I always try to offset the color to get those fish to hone in on the the middle of the bait so with all these fish out here you got to give it a try for at least a couple casts let's see what happens It's like a blob coming through the water on the grass. Hmm. I wanted that on that muck there. And I got four five sixteenth ounce heads on it, but still a lot of weight for a shallow lake, you know. Big bass! Big bass! Alabama rig! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! A giant! Oh my god! A giant on Alabama rig! Oh! Holy smoker! Holy smoker! Folks, that is the power. Size, would you look like? Yeah. And right there, guys, is the power of the A-Rig. You know, I don't care what you think about it. Some people agree with it. Some people don't agree with the Alabama rig. Whatever your thoughts are on this rig, it's a killer. Uh, late fall into winter and then winter in the spring. That pre-spawn period, it's hard to beat. That is a big one. That is an odd looking fish. He's short and fat, but you can tell by his belly what that fish has been eating. He's been eating shad. And the A-Rig is almost mesmerizing that the way it, it comes through the water. And um, we're gonna let this fish go, but I really wanna talk to you a little bit about that thing. And uh, the drawing power, the, the way that this rig mesmerizes fish. Sometimes you can't be throwing anything else but the A-Rig. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Mwah. All right, guys, I was about to let this fish go. Take a look at his mouth real quick. I don't know if you can see that. That is a straight up gizzard shad tail coming out. <laughs> Talk about a hungry fish. Talk about a fish that's been eaten. Absolutely crazy. All right, guys, it has been an awesome day. I hope you enjoyed this one. This is fall transition fishing the period of late fall into winter. A lot of times you gotta go scrap. We caught some on a jerk bait, we caught some on a finesse swim bait, and we caught some on an A-rig. Uh, perch, crappie, bass, a couple big ones. It's been a fun day. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Going Ike. I'm gonna let this bass go. Bye.
Yeah, look, tell me what's the vibes, what's the moves? Yeah, I just hit a mic key for the juice. Yeah, ain't no captain, I'ma tell the truth. I've been winning for so long, it's hard to lose. Yeah, deal, be my source, Christian, like Dior. Yeah, I can't stop.